Just as the last Facebook whistleblower was starting to be forgotten, another one has resurfaced. An ex-Facebook data analyst, Sophie Zhang, who says that after seeing the last whistleblower testify before Congress, that she now has the courage to do the same. Now, this whistleblower situation is a little bit different, as it seems that they are more focused on the political manipulation that takes place on Facebook by foreign governments. From what I was able to find, it appears that one of Sophie's primary jobs was identifying fake engagement on Facebook, which is a process by which a campaign or maybe a corporation that's offering some kind of product or service will use bots or even pay people to use multiple sock accounts, create and use multiple sock accounts to create fake hype around that product or that service or that political campaign. And in some cases, uh, these bots and sock accounts would also harass the opposition to the political campaign uh, that they're trying to promote. And apparently, this is a rampant problem on Facebook. This is going on a whole lot. Now, I don't personally use that platform, but I know how bad botting is on YouTube. Like, I've noticed, and I'm sure a lot of you have noticed, that some of my videos will either have someone that's pretending to be me shilling some kind of crypto scam, or sometimes there will be several bots that just all appear to be having a conversation. Like one of them will leave a comment and then a whole bunch of them will reply to that comment and almost seem like they're talking to one another, like it's a legitimate comment. Uh, and again, it'll be about some kind of crypto scam. So I guess that they're doing all of that to make it look more legit. And clearly, these bots are being created faster than YouTube can ban them since they're so prevalent, like they're not just on my YouTube videos they're on, they're on videos that don't even have to do with technology at all. Like it'll just be some, you know, random like algorithm video and then you see this whole chain of comments and it's the same and it's so generic. Uh, but again, they're so prevalent and their comments stay up for so long. So apparently it's either something that YouTube just doesn't care about or they don't know how to fight it. Uh, but here are some of the big revelations uh, that came from her memo about Facebook. So it took Facebook leaders nine months to act on a coordinated campaign that used thousands of inauthentic assets. So I'm guessing that these are either like fake phone numbers and like fake profile pictures and stuff like that uh, to boost President Juan Orlando Hernandez of Honduras on a massive scale to mislead the Honduran people. And two weeks after Facebook took action against the perpetrators in July, they returned, leading to a game of whack-a-mole between Sophie and the operatives behind the fake accounts, which are still active today. So in this particular instance, Juan Hernandez was getting something like 60,000 likes on his post in a month and a half, uh, which is a whole lot on Facebook but four fifths of these were coming from bots. So obviously he's got a huge boost, a whole lot of fake hype, which is helping the algorithm to help actually promote his campaign to more legitimate people and make it seem like he's more liked than he actually is. In Azerbaijan, Zhang discovered the ruling political party utilized thousands of inauthentic assets to harass the opposition en masse and Facebook began looking into the issue after a year after she reported it, and the investigation is ongoing. So we are once again hearing that Facebook is a morally corrupt company whose platforms are overall making the world a worse place. And why is this happening? Because of Facebook's greed. At the end of the day, Facebook is a private company whose responsibility is to its shareholders. Its goal is to make money just like so many other large corporations, and to the extent that they care about any ideology is really just going to come from the personal beliefs of the people who work there, of the higher-ups that are actually running Facebook, um, and because the ideology is going to affect their bottom line profit. This is why I personally tend to distrust companies that just take certain political stances because they probably aren't born out of any sort of principle, but it's rather just them doing a simple equation of, oh, what do I have to believe or what do I have to pretend to believe in order to make the most money? 
So what is going to be done about it? Send Facebook before our morally corrupt leaders whose jobs also include telling lies for profit just like Facebook and have them wag the finger at Facebook once again? Or maybe they'll actually do something this time. Maybe they'll say that Facebook has to be broken up into smaller companies and you know have more government oversight. But the problem with that is you have to somehow categorize what they're doing wrong. You can't just say, oh, we're breaking you up because you're Facebook. You have to define what makes Facebook a problem and then make laws against that. So that if any other company does that, they face the same penalty. And frankly, I don't trust people who barely understand how the internet works to create a proper legal definition to outlaw the shenanigans that Facebook is taking place in. Uh, they're not going to be so broad as to just say, oh, you can't uh, tell lies or allow lies to flourish for profit because for one, something so broad as that wouldn't be constitutional. But also, so much of our media, retail, and even political success revolves around telling lies to make money. But Facebook's power over our politics is still a problem. And I think the best way to fix it without the government affecting our free speech uh, is to, for us as consumers, the people using Facebook, uh, to either not use these harmful products at all or to use them more moderately and more responsibly. During the few hours long Facebook outage, that company lost about $6 billion, which I guess they got that figure based on their stock price dropping, which was already happening a few days before, uh, as well as estimates of maybe how much money would have been made during that time. And maybe they also had to refund some people who bought ads that were supposed to be shown during that time. But anyway, they, they came to the conclusion that they ended up losing about $6 billion during those few hours. Uh, but this still shows that these huge companies can actually take a hit when the eyeballs aren't on them, right? Like they may be a trillion dollar company, but if they were to be boycotted for a long enough period of time, they would actually start to feel it. The fact that Facebook has the ability to decide elections based off of what content they allow people to see shows that the people using it are addicted. They have a serious problem with Facebook. They don't have a healthy relationship with Facebook. It's really no different than somebody who uh, is like an alcoholic, right? They don't have a healthy relationship with alcohol and maybe they need to be completely abstinent because if they just have one drink, they go completely crazy. They end up downing a whole fifth of vodka and taking the pants off. And what's so ironic is that the same people who seem to really be having the problem with it, because let's be honest, it's not really a whole lot of Zoomers that are on Facebook. Uh, it's the same people that were telling kids that it was stupid and a waste of time to be on Facebook uh, back in 2007. And also, because we're talking about political manipulation, uh, generally, it is the older people who are more active in politics. So everybody, people of all ages, really need to just sober up from Facebook, okay? You gotta quit You gotta quit Facebook just like if you had some kind of other like drug addiction. You need to have real social interactions instead of using social media. That would probably also help the online politics or really just people's politics in general become less extreme since people tend to be more extreme and more outrageous when they're online instead of in person because they're behind a screen and a keyboard. So fix your relationship with Facebook or simply end it because you do not want to see what happens if the government has to do it.